Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. And we are back in your shop to learn about the process of building armor. Yeah, I had a really great crew on this, uh, this Ubisoft build, and so we need to highlight some of the things that we did. Right, you guys made three pieces of armor for their game, For Honor, mm -hmm. it was shown at E3, but we're actually in the process of finishing up right now. You have your crew here, which they each specialize in different things. Yeah, I got Evil Ted Smith that built all the helmets. I got Doug Stewart over there that's like one of the best ager and dyers around for making clothes look worn up and lived in and browned up. So we thought that you guys might enjoy learning from these guys how they go about their process. So we're gonna talk to Ted today, yep. get a demo and see how we get made. Yeah. So this is Evil Ted Smith. Ted, great to see you. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, we've seen you working in Frank's shop a lot, and of course your work. Uh, oh. You have a popular YouTube channel where you do a lot of fabrication tutorials. So we're great to have you on our channel as well. So you work with Frank to do these helmets yes, for Frank, this game. Yeah, matter of fact, Frank called me up and said, "Ted, I need helmets, and I'd love to do them on a foam, and you're the man." I said, "Fantastic." So I saw the pictures. I won't lie; I was a little intimidated at first, I'm like, "Wow!" And then I thought, you know what I could do is you just I have a generic, I have a basis of a pattern I did. So patterning, right? That's right. something we talked about before. Last year when Frank did his Rancor project, right. he sculpted the maquette, and then uh, Ben put pattern, like you think of it as making like clothes, foam right. clothes the for same the thing. creature. Exactly. Uh, that same principle applies to helmets? Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, I have a, a, a head form or a life cast. I covered it in foil, made duct tape, and made my cut lines, and made the registration marks, cut it, laid it all flat, just like a fabric, like you would do same with a jacket or a shirt, mm -hmm. laid it all out, made my patterns, and then I just kind of cut it, translate that into foam, you cut the foam and then piece it back together. You're prototyping in three dimensions, yes. then laying it out in two dimensions, and then putting it back together in three dimensions. Yeah, because as, as a kid, I always thought, like, everything starts off flat. How does that flat thing become something curved and round? You have to make darts, you have to make cut lines, and so that was the secret to it. So is that how you went about designing one of these helmets? Did you sculpt something in prototype, or did you, with your experience, freeform drawing of a pattern? A little bit. What I do is I knew the helmet. I just wanted to start with a basic. So I started with a basic pattern. I have my helmet pattern. Mm. Uh, I sell on the Evil Ted website, Evil Ted channel. Uh, I have a pattern. And what I do is I took the basic pattern, and you guys can download it. Oh, very cool. It looks very much like this. And what you do is you piece the patterns together. Oh, it's a blueprint. It's, it's a, a blueprint, blueprint for the so, helmet. So what this is basically, this is the top of the head, and this is the side head. And being the helmet symmetrical, you only need one. So you just trace one side for the right side, flip it for the left. So that's all we have to do. It's, and your people are saying, is it that simple? And the answer is yes. What I'm gonna do is take this pattern, and this, like I said, this is what I made from the aluminum foil and duct tape pattern. Mm -hmm. I transferred it, laid it out in, uh, onto paper, and traced it. And then I just made it onto a paper pattern. I like to convert my patterns into something like hard stock or poster stock. Like a pattern, like anything else, you can just use it over and over again. Right, right. If you're just making this one helmet, we have it printed right now on standard eight and a half and 11 sheets of paper. Right. The pattern's actually bigger than that. So you're just taping the pieces together as long as they're all to scale. Right, exactly. Cool, but if you again transfer it to poster stock, card stock, manila envelope, you right. can save that, put it in a drawer and you can make these multiple times. Exactly, so you have your pattern so you don't have to keep making it all over again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and just trace this right straight onto my uh, foam piece. Mm. Now, the thing that's secret, the big secret to when you're tracing stuff, is you're not only gonna get the shape of your uh, pattern, but you see these little notches I made on the side? Yes. These are registration marks. And the reason I put those in is because when you go to uh, bend the foam and heat up, foam moves and travels. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure it goes right back to the same spot it was in the original pattern. So when I made my pattern, I made these marks. So therefore, when I heat it and glue it back together, they're gonna line right back up. Uh, exactly. So they're just ways to identify where the pieces touch together. It's not actually, you're not cutting these parts no. out and it's not, because it's foam, it's already malleable, it's not going to stick out. Right. Got it. I'm just making these so I know that when I go to glue this side to the other side, I have a mark to where it has to line up. There were years when I was young, starting off as a fabricator, I would make things out of foam and put them together and it would always be a little twerked or a little tweaked and I was always scratching my head. And I worked on a commercial with some professional fabricators and they made these marks and like a lightning bolt went off in my head and went, oh, of course. Registration. Registration marks. And of course they do that in the fabric world as well too. Now if you are taking your prototype and before you cut it, your pattern lines, where are the best places to make those registration marks? That's very good. I like to, it depends on how the size is, but you look, I always do like about an inch and a half spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's something smaller, 
you know, you can do like smaller, but yeah, you're right. Just a general disc, I think it's about an inch and a half to two inches when doing your spacing. Because you realize the foam is going to bend to a degree, so. And the cool thing about this too is that once in it, doing patterns, the cool thing is that you're, you have symmetry. Because mm -hmm. people sculpt costumes and sculpt helmets, and I'm always impressed with sculptors because those guys can just look at stuff and organically do the symmetry with sculpting. With, with, they all do it by hand. I, on the hand, cheat. I just make one side and flip it. And make it all symmetrical. Yeah, so the way if you're doing with helmet and armor, whatever you do, something like a armor piece or some Iron Man costume where you're making at home, once you make one side, all you have to do is flip your pattern, boom, instant That's symmetry. That's important. Don't make two of the exact same. They need to be chiral. You need to flip it over and you have to reverse. That's right. It saves you the headache of like making something. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that sculpt, and I just said, I admire them. They're phenomenal. And I have friends that sculpt. And I always like, oh, how do they do that? Because with me, I just do one side and flip it. Now you're outlining, you're tracing it with a Sharpie and yes. you're cutting along the Sharpie. You cut on the inside or the outside? Like how, how close do you have to be to that pattern? With the helmet, I'll tell you what, being foam, you have a lot of forgiveness. Uh, if you're doing something with plastics and Sintra, and I like even like warble, you can be, you know, have a little bit of precision to it, but this stuff, we're all right. For me personally, I just like to draw right on the line. Right on the line. Right on the line. Okay, you can They're, be a little more generous with the cutting because you always can cut out and trim, right. trim and, later. And the cool thing is, once again, too, when we're cutting our foam, I always tell people, when you're cutting, make sure when you're doing your blade, the blade stays upright. You don't want to do this or that because it affects the contact of your foam. So when you're gluing two pieces together, you want to get that perfect curve. Oh. It's, you've got to make sure it's a 90 degree cut. I make sure my blade stays straight up when I'm looking at. And maybe that's a good place to talk about this foam itself. This looks like you're just using like a mat, like yoga mat, an exercise mat. Yes, it's actually a floor mat and you can find these at any retail store. These are just uh, inexpensive floor mats. So this is what people put on their floor for comfort, mostly gym mats. And what I like about these guys is they're inexpensive. You can get a pack of these guys for like $9.99 and you get like four pieces of foam. That's plenty to make a costume. Doesn't matter how thick it is, this one's... Let's say half inch. Mm -hmm. The half inch is always a good thickness. The reason I like half inch is because it holds its shape. Once you heat it and shape it, it's thick enough, it kind of holds together. Okay. And as you see, once again, this is great. I'm just cutting right on the line. All right, Ted, the yes, sir. patterns are all, the pieces are all cut out. Yes, sir, we got, we got our top of our helmet, got our sides, once again, symmetry, perfectly uh, symmetrical. It's, it's only three pieces. That's it, that's all that's you need. That's it, and it's gonna end up looking like this. We can like show right. that this is exactly how the centerpiece, this is that centerpiece, it's gonna it. bend together and it's just the right side right. and the left side. Perfectly symmetrical. Now, the next thing is, uh, most foam we used to work with in the days, the L200 was soft and you would mm -hmm. just glue it together and hold its shape. This stuff's a little bit denser, so what I like to do is I kind of preheat a curl into it. So I like to warm it up and put a slight curl to it and it kind of pulls it all together. Because right now, when you glue it, it's just gonna fight itself. So I wanna take, a, take, take some of the fight out Put on high heat. What I'm gonna do is I'm just, it doesn't have to be a lot, just a slight bend to it. Now, are you heating specific places, an even distribution of heat? Uh, I, try doing... do, I, I just try to do an even distribution. I'm just gonna do a slight curl to this guy. So I just wanna take these, uh, take the edge to it and see how it's nice and square mm -hmm. and flat. I wanna make that curve. I'm gonna make this whole thing kind of a domus curve to it. Does it matter which side you're applying more heat to so it bends in a certain way? Right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat this whole guy up, get him all nice and warm. I try to do both sides. People always ask me, what temperature do you like your heat gun at, Ted? I like it at hot. The hottest you can get it, the faster it gets. And also, too, the cool thing is, too, you're sealing your foam, too, because all the pores in it are very porous, but when you heat seal it, it skins up and it also makes it easier to paint. Oh. So you're doing two, you're killing two birds with one stone. Now, there's a texture on the other side of this foam. Do you right. prefer working with one side as the exterior side and one as the interior? And that's always an option. A lot of people love to do the, uh, the Mass Effect games. Yeah. And people do the Mass Effect armor. They love the texture side. Right. And I thought it was really kind of cool is that they were able to like get this really cool detail in armor suits without killing themselves. So you just bought the floor mat foam. Looks like carbon fiber. Yeah, and they would just paint it black and do a little dry brush on it and bang, look at that. And I've, uh, I've done helmets with it the same way. You just put the carbon fiber, but that's a cool texture. See so you're, you're bending it now and you have heat in there. So as it cools down, you can, you can right. add some see? And now, see this? malleable. That's all you need. Our next step is glue. When gluing, I always like to do the center top first, uh, the top of the helmet, because you don't have to, because the sick in the sides on is a lot easier. The other cool thing, you have scrap pieces of foam. I take my glue, 
And what you do is you want to get down these little nooks and crannies. And the only way to do that is to uh, just chase it with a piece of scrap foam. What's your preferred glue method, like a glue material? Oh, I actually like, there's, there's drop is good, but I also like barge cement. Okay. Now barge cement is a kind of adhesive for leathers and soles of shoes. Uh, the shoemakers use it to put the soles of shoes and hold on mm -hmm. leather. And it's an industry standard when you're working in the movie business, that's why I got turned on to barge. And the cool thing about barge cement too is that when it dries and it adheres, it has a bit of a flexible quality to it. And some of the kind of adhesive like Wellwood, which is still good, uh, gets a little stiff over time. But the barge cement always stays nice and pliable. Fuses like no other, becomes one piece. Right, and a matter of fact, once you glue the pieces together, your foam will rip before your glue will, once you get this contact. And that's the thing about contact too is that it's in the title, it's contact. You apply two surfaces really thin, let them dry, semi-dry, and you push them together. And they, they make, when they make contact, that's when they adhere. Which gives you a little bit more working time. Exactly. To get both top, front and back done at the same time. Right, and you work as fast as you can. So we do this. And also too, the cool thing with this is, uh, Frank is nice to have me set up in a squeeze bottle. You can do barge into the squeeze bottle. And these are, find these any like store, you can get like ketchup holders or mustard yeah. holders. It's the same stuff. You can put them in there and it holds the, the contact adhesive. Easy to work with. You can either use a glue plot or a, uh, a squeeze bottle. There you no go. No need for brushes. No. You're just using excess foam. That's right. Killing two birds with one stone. Now let that dry a little bit. Now, this is the fun part. You see those registration marks? This is where they come in handy. You line them up. Because see, if they weren't here, it's kind of, you're like, we're, you know, I mean, like I say, when I was gluing stuff, it kind of gets a little tricky. There you go. How much are you holding and pushing the other? Uh, you don't need clamps, obviously. No, you don't, because once you make contact, you're good. Uh, all right, you line it up. And as you see, what I'm doing, see how it's happening? It's kind of pulling it together. It's making the curves. And that's the, that's the, that's the cool thing about the darts. It, it, and this is how you know you're, you're basically reproducing what you made out of uh, your pattern earlier, out of the foam tape or the little pattern I made off the, off the head cast. I, got, I just basically want to reproduce what I have. See, there it is. See, it's sticking there. That's my sim. Now, we got that. We let that dry. Come right here, line up the marks. And the people uh, usually ask me a lot, how do you make clean seams, Ted? I said, the trick to making clean seam is that when you put your two pieces together, make sure they're flush. Because sometimes in your building, they get a little off, make a little bit of a lip, you can always go back and sand it, but you want to prevent that. So, I always kind of run my thumb along the top just to make sure I'm flush while I'm doing this. And that's the key. It's easy to do it right, you know, and just stick it down. You can definitely sand foam, but it just makes it easier to kind of line them at the same time. There we go. Now, well, it really matters on that top part, the part that's exposed, have that right. seamy flush. And here's a little trick too I like to do. While the glue's still drying, I just kick it out and fold it back the other way. And what that does, that puts tension on the seam that is glued. So that's gonna make them nice and tight. So matter of fact, while that's doing that, let's go ahead and start applying glue to our edges of the helmet. Same thing again, I want to do the, the I want to do the dart first. And I can push them two together like this. Kind of move them around, take my scrap piece. All right, Ted. Yep, I got my glue and all the edges here, and this is the fun part. This is where you really see it come together. Again, I got, I like to just, I'd like to do the darts first. Got mm -hmm. this done first. So then you start with the front, line up your seam, right on the edge. You start with your front also for the center piece. Is that just because that's going to be the one that you want perfect? Right. And, and if any, anything mismatches, <laughs> having that in the back is better than having it in the front. That is correct. So, but the cool thing about that is we're not going to have that problem because... Registration. That is correct. We've got a registration mark because I, again, in my youth would do it and I'm always like, ah, oh, my half inch off, what happened? And that's because I did not know about these marks. And it goes to show you, no matter how long you've been doing something, you never stop learning. And that's the thing I like to tell people, like, I, I love, I've got fans and people that write me letters and go, hey, Ted, did you know? I'm like, no, I did not know. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. It's like, there's some great tips and people, I just love the, uh, the community of sharing. And that's what I love about this whole thing with you guys on Tested. It's just great, you get this, we get to see these great stuff and behind the scenes of all this wonderful things you guys do. Because now no, you're a part of it. I know, and I'm so thrilled, because I like to share. And I just, I think, Part of the movie magic as a kid growing up is when you start to see how things were made, mm -hmm. I was like, I was hooked. I'm like, I have to be a part of this. It doesn't take away the magic at all. No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I think it adds to it because when you find out how they did something, a trick that was so simple, and when you realize, wait a minute, that's all they did? That's a genius. 
Then you can do it yourself. Exactly, that you don't have to be intimidated. When people see a cool suit of armor, like, I can't do that, like, yes, you can. See, look at that, there you go. Now, that's our first wow. half. First half. Look, it's kind of pulled a little bit, it's because the glue's still a little fresh, no worries, that will dry now. Now, you designed this to be three pieces for your right, pattern. Right, exactly. At what point do you decide, okay, she needs a fourth piece. We should cut them into six pieces. Like, what informs that decision? Uh, usually it depends on how elaborate the piece is. Everybody always says, I want to make, like, they'll send me a picture of a really cool, like, video game character, and I'll have this kind of, like, helmet with a beak, you know, and a, some spires coming off the helmet, and you realize, well, that's a beak, so you have two side pieces, you have a top of the horn, but then, you have the helmet there, so that's another, that's another two more pieces. And it, the more elaborate the pieces, the more the more elaborate the helmet of shape is, you have to add more parts. to Because film, uh, like this cool thing with foam, is it bends only so far. So that's the thing about doing registration marks and making lines on your uh, helmet when you make your pattern. You know that the, film's, the foam's gonna bend so far, but you'll, it's only gonna bend so far. Just like fabric and clothing, when you make a pattern, you, it can't you know, bend all the way, so you have to make a, you have to make a, a different part. Mm. So you are deconstructing it in your head, that 3D right. to 2D part. And with your experience, like you said, it's not just about how many accessories, whether it's a visor or horns, it's also about how much the foam, the material will bend to your needs. Exactly, and the thing is, Dustin, I tell people out there too, is like, don't be intimidated when you're building stuff because it's all a little overwhelming in the beginning, but over time you'll get more comfortable working with it. That's why I kind of like, like making these patterns. and. I have these patterns I sell online, and the reason I sell them, people get them is that they can understand now this was once a flat piece of paper, a flat piece of foam, and now it made a round helmet. And it's all about darting and pattern making. And it goes to show you that there is a way of doing it. And once you get this pattern, you can realize, I could, hey, I want to make this longer, you just add paper to that. Or if I want to make a face shield, you just add a piece of paper, cut it, transfer it, like that. Just it's like a, this. I this, mean, we start off talking about this. This is a helmet you made for that costume, and even though it has the face shield, right. the essential part of it is very similar right. to this helmet. So I took the concept of this pattern, I bought this pattern, but I realized this, this pattern, this cuts in sharp. So with this curves in the land, I just took the pattern and went straight with it, so I could compensate for the drop off of the helmet. And there was a peak on the helmet. Mm -hmm. I realized the only way to get that peak, instead of cutting 90 degrees, I cut it at a 45 degree. So when you touch the two pieces of 45 foam, it makes a peak. The inside of the material, the right. thickness of it, allows you to then but it bunch it up. It, made it, it forces a peak. Oh, and those are tricks you'll cool. learn as you keep pulling it. And the, way you, and the way I learn is just by doing it, just by playing with it and doing it, experimenting. How about this rim on the bottom here? So that was kind of a fun little trick. As a matter of fact, when I got this all done, it had a nice flare on it, and it's got a kickoff on it, and I realized the helmet was already done, so I took a knife and I cut a, a beveled piece of foam. If you look, it's just a beveled piece of foam I just glued on and stuck on it, glued onto it, and then kind of sanded it, and then came in from the backside with a knife and cut it at an angle to get rid of the thickness of the foam to give the illusion that it kind of bends out. But that's yeah. actually a separate piece of foam. Oh. And then the visor, a face plate? Same thing, I took a, uh, I made a piece of paper, and I kind of like had, a, had an actual really cool illustration. They gave us designs, so I was matching the design. I laid a piece of paper pattern on, laid it up and traced it, and kind of figured out my curve, made it, traced it on the foam and did the same thing, the uh, 45 cut, glued together. And what happened was when I made it, it was too narrow. So I had to take the pattern, make it bigger, and do it again. So again, when you make something, if it messes up, don't kill yourself, it's all part of learning. That's right, the material isn't all that expensive. Exactly. And then how about oh. this guy here? Because <laughs> you have some, this is a really big piece of foam. You didn't make this out of that mattress foam, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, what I did was I ended up, uh, we were, uh, uh, we usually would order thicker foam, but we were kind of on a deadline. I just took this foam and sanded uh, the rough side and stacked it. So I stacked a bunch of foam together, mm -hmm. uh, glued it all together, and then took it through the bandsaw, cut the shape, and then took a uh, belt sander. And gonna... So I sanded them. And I did them both symmetrical, and then went back in with a knife and cut this off and made it like jagged and broken. And then the cool thing with this is, I had the pattern, I altered it, did the same thing, did the curve. And the cool thing with foam is, you get different thicknesses of foam. Mm -hmm. And craft foam, you can get any any craft store. And that's what I ended up doing here. This is all thin pieces of craft foam that I cut out and uh, added a little detail. And the snake, the snake head you see here, the dragon, yeah. that's a thin piece of craft foam. And for the lines, I took a little uh, wood burner and just burned the lines into it. And that's up. I cool. did it all separate and glued it all together. And did some wood burning details, sealed it. That and gives then, you your battle damage. Right. And then a sword did, did, slashed into it. Right. 
and, and it, once again, the most saving grace, the coolest thing is, hails to the painters. Nothing pulls something together like a good paint job. If you saw this at first, you'd be like, eh, it looks okay. But once you get paint on it, wow. I mean, look at this. This was once just gray foam. It looked just like this. Painted, sealed, coated, wow, paint. Awesome. Yeah. Well, the helmet is done. This, this is the one you had beforehand. Mm -hmm. This is the one we just built. Right. You gonna put it on? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. See, we're superheroes. We have to take our glasses off before we put our helmets on. Oh, uh, mine's not gonna fit. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Ted. People can find more of your work on your YouTube channel. Uh, your website has some of these patterns, some free patterns, some patterns for people can they can buy as well. Yep, exactly. And uh, thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you. And dude, test it. Keep it up. It's awesome. Thank you guys for watching as well. We'll be back in Frank's shop with more on this project, learn more about that painting and weathering process. So look forward to that video. But until then, it's Ted, Norm, Frank's over there working. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye.